Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service of the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this next, uh, I suppose, series of short videos is going to deal with uh, Boolean algebra, and uh, more importantly with uh, Boolean expression reductions. Uh, but this particular video is going to concentrate on, I suppose, the some important Boolean Boolean identities uh, that you need to be aware of uh, if you want to successfully to be able to I suppose reduce a Boolean expression down into its simplest form. Uh, so let me list off some of these Boolean identities uh, and in a later video what we'll do is we'll do a short little proof using maybe true tables to show that these identities uh, I suppose that the left hand side and right hand sides are actually equivalent. So I suppose uh, the first identity that we're going to define is that when we have when we have an expression A okay, uh, or a term A and when we or the term with a zero Okay, uh, by definition, that particular the ordering with the zero is equivalent is equivalent to a. So if you have an expression uh, and you have a term that's ordered with zero, we can lose the zero or drop the zero, and that's just equivalent to a. And as I said in, uh, in one of our later videos, we'll do a little proof of that. Uh, you can do that through a true table. Um, actually, maybe I'll do this little proof here now. Okay, so what we have is we have an or, we have an input a. A left operand, and we have an input uh, zero on the right on the right hand side. So let's have a look at this. Uh, so just from a true table perspective, we have a and zero as the inputs. A can take on one of two values. It can either be zero or one. The input zero is always off, so we always have zero. And what we need to do with these inputs is we need to order them together. So it's a or zero. And we know with an OR, an OR only ever gives us zero when both of the inputs are simultaneously zero. And the only place where both inputs are simultaneously zero is, is here, on, it's at this particular level, so we get a zero here. Uh, they're not simultaneously zero here, so we get a one. And hopefully what we can actually see is that the output, okay, is dependent on the inputs, okay? But when the, when the, when the input of A is zero, the output is zero. When the input of A is one, the output of is one, so actually this particular expression here is only dependent, okay, on the value that that the left operand the a takes on at any moment in time. So really, this is just a, a small little proof for us to to be able to, I suppose, believe uh, that a ordered with zero is actually equal to a. Okay, so that's our first identity. It's an important identity. Actually, what we see also is on the left hand side here we have we have two terms or together and on the right hand side we have a single term so actually what we've done here is a reduction going from left to right or another way we well, what we usually call that is an elimination okay so that's important you can go from left to right which is a an elimination but we can also introduce the zero by going from right to left which is called I suppose an introduction so we have two concepts when we go from many to less, it's called, I suppose, an elimination. And when we go from few to more, it's called an introduction. Okay. Uh, the next important identity that we'll that we'll need uh, is that when we have a term ordered with one, that that's simply equal to one. Because what we know is that anything ordered with one is equal to one, and you could do a true table of that particular identity as well to show that the output is always one. Uh, the next important identity, uh, let's call this identity three, is that a ended with zero is always equal to zero. Our next important identity, let's call this four, is that a ended with one is always equal to a. Okay. Our next important identity is, let's call this five, is a ordered with a is equal to a. The next important one, let's call this six, is a ended with a is equal to a. Our next one, seven, okay, is a ordered with a bar or the negation of a. Uh, that's always equal to one. This is like saying I'm going to the shops or I'm not going to the shops. It's always true, okay. Uh, identity eight uh, is a ended with a bar, okay. Well, a ended with a bar is this like saying I'm going to the shops and I'm not going to the shops, which is a contradiction or it's impossible, so that's equal to zero. And then I suppose we have the double negation, uh, nine, which is a bar bar is defined to be equal to 
is it defined to be equal to a. Okay. And moving on then to some other important identities, uh, let's call this identity 10. Uh, we have a ord with b is equivalent to b ord with a. You can see that our operands have moved position. We say they've commuted, yeah, okay. Uh, and actually, when you people that get trains and get buses are called commuters, yeah, because they move from one place to the other, okay. Uh, similarly, when we have the upper the operation is an and, let's call this identity 11. We have a anded with b is equivalent to b anded with a, okay. So, this is another form of the commutative law. Uh, let's call this operation 12 or identity 12, uh, where we have a ord with b ord with c okay in that particular order in other words we order b with the c first and then the result we or with the a well that's equivalent to a ord with b ord with c in this particular order where we or the a with the b first and then the result is ord with the c okay and this is called the associative law you can see that these two things are being associated together over here which means the operation must be done before we do the outer or. And in this case over here, we're associating the A with the B first, and then we do the outer or, okay? So either way you do this, you'll get an equivalent, uh, an equivalent output. And let's call this identity 13, is A anded with B anded with C in this particular order, where we associate the B and the C first and do the operation, Let's see what the output is, and then the results of inside the brackets is then anded with the A. Is equivalent, as you would expect, A anded with B, associated together, anded with C. So there's 13 important operations. There's also another couple of them. Look, there's many of these particular identities, yeah? Uh, these are the most frequent ones that, that we're gonna rely upon. Uh, so let's call the next one operation or identity 14, uh, which says that A anded with B or C is equivalent to, okay, we're gonna multiply out the brackets. Like when we have an algebra where we are set as of real numbers, and we our operations are multiplication and addition, we can multiply out the brackets, and we can do this as well in this Boolean algebra. So when we multiply out the brackets, we end up with A is anded with B, that's A anded with B to give us this term, and then, or A is anded with C. Okay, and this is called the distributive law. Okay, and uh, there's another form of the distributive law. Okay, where we have a ord with b uh, anded with anded with c. This becomes, I suppose, uh, a anded with c or b anded with c. Okay, that's important. And then we have two other laws, which are known as the Morgan's Laws, uh, which are quite familiar to us from our propositional logic and also from our set theory. Uh, let's call this identity 16. Uh, what we have is A ord with B bar is equivalent to A bar and it with B bar. This is like what we defined before. You break the bar, you flip the sign, ands go to ors, ors go to ands. Um, and then the other form of it is let's say identity 17, where we have A and it with B bar, the bar is across the operation, uh, that's equivalent to break the bar and flip the sign. So the bar gets broken, that leaves a bar above the A, the sign goes to a plus or an or, the and goes to an or, and then we have a B bar, okay? So that's 17 important identities. Uh, and it's important, I suppose, Look, I do accept that there's a lot of identities here. There's a lot more identities than this particular set of identities, yeah? Uh, but the only way you're gonna be able to become familiar with them is by doing the drill uh, and using these uh, as part of your uh, Boolean reductions. Okay, so once again, guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development uh, and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope this short video uh, was helpful. Uh, the next video will look at some of my bo Boolean, Boolean expressions and we'll look at applying these particular rules to help us to reduce them expressions down into their simplest form. Okay.